Welcome to video 74 in series 3 and in this video I'm going to write the enemy animation script. I'll make a new folder here. I'll call that enemy scripts, enemy scripts. And I'll call this enemy animation. And open it up. I won't need the start and update method, so I'll get rid of those. I'll have two variables, private enemy master, enemy master, and private animator, my animator. Okay, and then I will establish those references. So enemy master is get component enemy master. And for the animator, I'll say if get component animator is not equal to null, then in that case, my animator is equal to get component animator. Okay. Now I'll have a whole bunch of other methods uh, for actually carrying out the animations, for getting them to happen. Uh, so void uh, set animation to walk and I'll just put in here if my animator is not equal to null and if my animator dot enable And that's the basic structure, so I'm just going to copy this method here and reuse it. This one will be idle. This one attack. And this one here I'll set it to struck. And it's going to listen to the event for player uh, for the enemy health deduction. So it needs a int dummy, just a dummy value. It's not actually going to get used. And uh, finally, void a disable animator. So when the enemy dies, it's important to disable it. So if my animator is not equal to null, Then in that case, uh, my animator dot enabled is equal to false. Okay, now coming back to each of these, uh, so now I'll actually assign, we'll set the parameters so that the animation plays. My animator dot set bool, because I know this one is a bool which we just defined previously. And if we go to Unity, let's go and actually get the value. So parameters under that list, double click it, copy that so it's exactly the same name and come back here. Okay, is pursuing. And what value is that? That's going to be a true, because we want it to walk. I'll just copy that. When I'm setting to idle, I'll set is pursuing to false. Okay, because that's exactly how I have it structured here, that when it becomes false, I want that to happen. So I set the bool to, the animator bool to false. Uh, this one's a little different for attack, so my animator uh, dot set trigger. And what's the name of the trigger? It's attack. Well, I don't really need to copy it, but I guess just in case I spelled it wrong or something. And that's it. So it's a trigger, done. And the same sort of thing below, I'll just copy that, paste it here, and go and get this one. Copy that. Replace. Okay, good. Now I need to set up the uh, event. So first of all, set up initial references. And now there's quite a few uh, events that I need to listen to. So enemy master dot event enemy die plus equal disable uh, animator done. So copy that right there. Again, so the next one, if uh, set animation to walk, what event would cause that? Event uh, enemy uh, walking. That's pretty logical. Set animation to walk. 
There we go. Now what would cause it to go to idle? So if the uh, enemy reaches their target, so event enemy reach nav target, then uh, set animation to idle. Okay. Right, the next one attack, so that's pretty obvious. So enemy master dot event enemy attack. There we go. Set animation to attack. And last of all, this uh, set animation to struck. Only one event can uh, that can be have that listening to it. So that's the enemy master dot event enemy deduct help set animation to struck. There we go. Uh, all right, so that should be it for this animation script. Pretty much what's going to happen if the enemy die event calls, then disable the animator. Uh, so that way no animations can try to play, and then the ragdoll will take over in another script. And then, of course, the others are pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so going back to Unity, let's drag it on. Okay, just apply that prefab change and just run it. Just make sure that there's no obvious errors and they aren't, so all good. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.